May we pray. Eternal God, our Father, how I thank you for another preaching moment. I ask of you, O oh God, that you take Daniel out the way, that you might have your way in this place. Hide me behind the cross. Lord, we ask you, God, that you will speak on our level and our language. God, that we might leave chains renewed and strengthened. But at the end of the day, you get all the glory. You get all the honor. That your servants pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, will you please turn to Job chapter 13? I'm going to read verse 15. Amen. Just an A clause. Job chapter 13, verse 15. Amen. Amen. Not job, but Job. Amen. Job chapter 13. Amen. May we stand. Amen. Amen. Job chapter 13, verse 15. And it reads, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Amen. That's enough to deal with this morning. Amen. 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 Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to talk for a few moments in your hearing about I'm sticking with God. Amen. I'm sticking with God. Have you ever felt like church asking God a question? God, why? Why must I experience this? I have been faithful. I have been studying your word. I've been doing the right thing. I was tempted to play the loud, oh Lord, but I didn't because I'm trusting in you. I didn't, I, I, I need some more money. I didn't go down to the casino, but how much I experience this. Why? God, am I going through what I'm going through? I have been faithful. I've been coming to church. I've been reading my Bible. But why does tragedy has to hit my door? Why, God? As we lean in our conversation this morning, these are some questions that Job is asked, his friends are asking. And explain to Job that, Job, you must have done something wrong. You did something. Even his wife told him, you ought to curse God and die. We find out in Job chapter 1 that Job was a righteous man. He was upright. He feared the Lord and he shunned evil. But then a tragedy happened. He lost everything. Lost his riches lost his family, lost his kids. And now Joel is trying to figure out, his friends say, you done something wrong while you're going through what you're going through. And God, and sometimes church, we must understand that it's not for us to try to comprehend God. It's not our job to figure out God out. Our job is to trust in him no matter what situation that we may be in. Amen. Listen, I know life is hard. I know um, they, they, they're picketing. I, 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 know, I know people, they, they, they are, are, are down having signs saying that we want better wages. We want better. Why do people have to go through this? The government is talking about is going to shut down again. Why do we have to go through this? We, what, we, what we have to do, church, is not trust in what we see, but rather trust in God. And see, that's what Job is encouraging us here this morning, is that no matter what we face, that we got to put our trust, our faith in God. Amen. 
That even though life might throw us some curveballs, life might have us upside down. Sometime in life, you want to throw in the towel. I came to encourage somebody today that don't throw in the towel. Just keep your faith. Just keep your trust in the Lord. Because if God can if he, if he can bring you to it, my God can see you through it. That I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how difficult it might be. I don't care if you feel like you, this, all hope is gone. I come to tell you this morning that there is hope. Because there is hope in Jesus. Preacher, how do you know there's hope? There's hope because you have some life in you. You woke up this morning. And since you woke up this morning, there is hope. That God is going to work it out. That God is going to see you through. That God is going to handle your situation. And so since God is going to handle your situation, child of God, you need to put your faith and your trust in God. Yeah, that's why Romans 8 and 28 tells us, and we know, that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and for the good of them that are called according to his purpose. I have to know that it's working out for me. I have to understand that I, I might not be able to see it, but I know God is working things on the back end. And when you begin to look back over your life, you begin to see that God has been working on your behalf. You know that you did not deserve that house. Your credit score was not up to par. But guess what? God had worked some things out on behind the scenes. You know that you did not deserve that job. You didn't have all the right resume, but guess what? You got the job because we serve a God who worked behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, you had a bad doctor's report. Yeah, they said they saw something on the screen, but guess what? We went back for a second, guess what? They didn't see it because guess what? We had a God who was working on behind the scenes. I, I don't know about you today. I thank God that we serve a God who works on behind the scenes. That sometimes I don't deserve what I have, but guess what? He gives it to me anyway because he loves me. He gave it to me anyway because he cares about me. If anybody in here glad today that God loves you and he cares for you yeah yeah you might be going through but guess what God loves you yeah you might go through some hard times and struggle but guess what God is right there he said in his word that he will never leave you nor he will forsake you and since my God will never leave me or nor forsake me I can walk through what I'm going through because my God can see me through yeah, yes, yes. This this book of Job, church, is broken up into three sections. The first section, chapter one and two, deals with a narrative passage. And then the verses, and then chapters three through 41 deals with a poem. And then chapter uh, 42, it goes back into a narrative passage. So Job is broken up into a little narrative and little poetry, little literature. So we, we, we find this in Job chapter 13, verse 15. He says, though he slay. That word slay in its original language means temporary kill. What that means, church, is that it refers to a temporary death. That it, it, it's, it's a reference to a punishment in the future world. So, so, so I'm glad, church, that what whatever I'm going through is only temporary. That's, a, that's some shouting news for somebody here to let you know that what you're facing is only temporary. Layoff is only temporary. That financial catastrophe your family going through is only temporary. That health situation that you're going through is only temporary. Amen. Now I'm glad today that trouble do not last always. Amen. That's why in Psalms 30 verse 5 says, For weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I have to know that whatever I'm facing is temporary, but it's a temporary death. So that means that something has to die. 
What has to die? What has to die, church, is my perception of what I'm going through or my perception that God has to come and deliver me. Guess what, child? When, when you go through cir certain circumstance, God, God wants you to not lean on what you're going through, but rather lean on him. That though you might be facing a problem, though you might be facing a, 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 a catastrophe in your life, God wants you to lean on him and he wants you to die to your flesh. He wants you to die to those things that keep holding you, that the thing that keep you into suffering. Yeah, yeah, sometimes when, you, when you're going through, you got to let some friends go. Listen, listen, I know that they've been your best friend. I, I, I know that you grew up with them. But guess what? When you're going through, you don't need to have them around. And some of us, church, if we're going to be honest here, we got to let some places go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something got to die. Yeah, that, that place you got to go to got to die. Yeah that, yeah, that liquor store you go to has to die. That casino you go to, it has to die. Playing the lotto, it has to die. It got, because that's what God is saying listen is that you, though he slayed me that it's only temporary it's a temporary death that I have to let some things go in my life so that God can be strong in my life and many times we are still suffering with things it's because we are not letting God in our life and we too busy holding on to those things that are crutches in our life and God told me to tell somebody in here today that you have to let that thing go you got to let that thing God so that God can be ruler and reign over your life because God don't want part of you he wants all of you and so sometimes you got to go through extra suffering because you a knucklehead you keep bumping your head against the wall it's because you won't let that thing go and God is saying listen in order for me to elevate you in order for you to come out of what you're going through you have to let that thing die Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Yes, yeah, temporary what you're going through. Though he slay me, it means me to determine the cause. Though he slay me, when we look at Job, Job character did not change. We find out that his friends try to change his character. His wife tries to change his character. But he stands flat foot tall. And he says, I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. When you go through your circumstance, you have to remain faithful unto God. And remember your character. Yeah, yeah. I have a I have a nine year old. Um, he go to school with Lauren, and Lauren's part of his church. And I have to remind my son when you go to school, remember who you are, because it's a lot of things that that he tried to fit in with, at, even at nine years old. And I have to remind him that you can't fit in. You have to remember who you are. And see, many times, not only do my son has to remember who, who he is, but many times we have to remember who we are. We, we should not compromise our character for anybody. And so many times when, when a job promotion comes, sometimes people, they want you to compromise your character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes when you hang out with your friends, they, they want you sometimes to compromise who you are. But Job teaches us there's a blessing in not being compromised who you are, but being faithful to the character, being faithful unto God. And I came to tell somebody that you got to be faithful to Jesus. You got to be faithful to God. So the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. 
that my confidence is not found in myself. But the reason why I can have character because my confidence is found in God Almighty. See, when I begin to, for, to lean on myself, I begin to fall. When I, when I begin to lean on myself, I begin to fail. But when I put my faith and when I put my trust in God, God begins to work miracles in my life. I, I know I'm not the only one here that God has worked a miracle through your life. When you look back over your life, the only reason why you made it was because you was leaning on Jesus. You was leaning on his everlasting arms. I ought to have a few people in here that says, I'm leaning today and I'm trusting in him that he will see me through. Though he, though he slay me, yet will I trust. That is Hebrew word trust. It means properly to wait. That means, church, that while he's waiting, it's an A for hope. That he's hoping. He don't know when God's going to come. But he's hoping that God's going to come. That even though that he's dealing with the loss of, of his family, the loss of his possessions, his wife ain't acting right, his friends ain't acting right, he still has hope in God. And I come to tell somebody today that there is hope for you. That it might look dark right now, but there is hope on the other side. Yeah, don't give up on your life. Don't give up. Yeah, on your marriage. Don't give up on your friends. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your grandchildren because there is hope. And you got to tell yourself that this too shall pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm facing, this too shall pass. Yeah, because if God done it before, he can do it again. If God brought me out of this situation, he can bring me out of that. If God healed my body, he can deliver me from drugs. If he, he delivered delivered you from drugs, he can deliver you from alcohol. If he delivered you from alcohol, he can deliver you from cussing. If he delivered you from cussing, he can deliver you from lust. If he delivered you from lust, he can deliver you from adultery. So no matter what you're facing, God can deliver you. And that there is hope for you. You want to lift up your head and walk out of here and say, I have hope. Yeah, I have hope that for better days to come, I have hope. Yeah, I can't see it yet. Yeah, I don't understand it yet. But guess what? I have hope that God will see me through. I have hope that he's going to make a way out of no way. I have hope that there is a better day ahead. I have hope. And my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I never trust the sweetest friend, but only lean on Jesus' name. Is there anybody here say, I'm leaning on him? Yeah, I'm trusting in him that he will make a way, that he will see me through. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him the problem is who are you putting your trust in who, what, who has your trust what I do for a living is a I am a um, financial planner so what I do what I always can tell when my clients where they're livelihood lies in because what is what they put the most their most money in <laughs> so you can tell what people put their most trust in is where they put their most of their money in <laughs> if you put your trust in the lord i mean that your money should be coming to the to the church that means that your money should be some buying some books for you to learn a little bit more about the Lord. See, many a time, church, that we put our trust in other things, but we ought to put our trust 
in the Lord. That's why the Bible says you ought to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Yeah, yeah, your trust, church, should always be in the Lord. So your trust should be in him and not in you. Because the problem, when I put my trust in myself, I fail. When I put my trust in the things of my own understanding, I begin to fall. And that's why Job says here that I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but guess what? My trust is not in what you're saying. My trust is in the Lord. And I have a few people here that walk out of here and say, I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. I'm going to put my faith and trust in him. Yeah, preacher, why should I put my faith and trust in him? Because over 3,000 years ago, yeah, he died on the cross for you that you might have the right to the tree of life. Is there anybody glad that Jesus died for your sins? That he got up one Sunday morning with all power in his hand. And since he got power, he can deal with what you're dealing with. He can he can handle your problems. He can handle what you're facing because he has all power in his hands. Put your trust in him. I don't know who you're speaking with today. I don't know who you're leaning on today. But I'm leaning on Jesus. I'm trusting in him that he will see me through.